By now, I think most of us know that the press release bailed off Doom at a different BFG. You know, the one that according to John Romero looked like Christmas. Not only that, but it fired a whopping 80 projectiles, which would slow your ancient PC to a crawl. Now, let's imagine a timeline where it did not change this BFG during development. Let's take a look at how the beta BFG used to work in the first place. After pulling the trigger, there's a delay of 10 ticks before the first projectile is shot. 80 projectiles are then fired for the next 40 ticks, with 2 projectiles shot per tick. Although 80 shots are fired, the BFG will only consume 40 cells. Each projectile can deal between 4 and 32 damage and multiples of 4. They have a speed of 875 map units per second and a width and height of 26 and 8 respectively. Unlike any other projectile based weapon in Doom, this one has a random horizontal and vertical spread applied to each projectile when shot. Its maximum horizontal spread can go up to 7.7 .7 degrees and vertical spread up to 8.9 degrees. Another unique property to this weapon is that the projectiles bounce off of floors and ceilings. Also, since the pre-release beta had no implementation of the auto-aim we all know and love, the BFG cannot aim at enemies above or below the player. Now it's time to compare the beta BFG to the... Mm, the cool BFG. Yeah, that's a good name for the present BFG. First and foremost, the beta's damage is vastly inferior. The cool BFG can deal 3559 damage max, including a max damage roll for the projectile, which is 800. The beta BFG's theoretical max damage is 80 times 32 damage, 2560. Pretty low, huh? And that's theoretical too. Doom's RNG table doesn't allow that many max damage rolls in a row. After running many simulations, the average damage seems to be about 1500, and the highest damage recorded was around 1700. Maybe in very busy maps, where hundreds of RNG calls are made each tick, it can go over 2000, since two projectiles are shot per tick. RNG calls can be made by enemies or the map itself between each tick, causing each projectile to roll a high number. But you have better odds buying a winning lottery ticket. Anyway, this is all numbers and statistics. How does the beta BFG perform in popular maps? How about we start off by playing Bobby's first slaughter map experience, Plutonia's Go To It. Well, the first thing we can notice with the beta BFG is that it's actually quite good at stunlocking cyberdemons. 80 projectiles will pretty much guarantee a pain state. 120 cells to kill a cyberdemon with relative ease is pretty okay. And that's pretty much the only thing the beta BFG is good at. Dealing with these flying enemies is horrendous. The lack of auto aim really cripples this weapon, so for the sake of playability, let's upgrade it a bit. Alright, that's a bit better, but still, at least with the cool BFG, all enemies are hit and killed instantly thanks to the tracers. Tracers also lock onto enemies, unlike the beta BFG, where the spread can end up missing the target completely. I also can't seem to find a way to efficiently use all 80 projectiles to kill at least two Mancubi with a single shot. One thing that seems to work out pretty well is the projectile bouncing. The projectile isn't wasted and is hitting the Mancubi all the way in the back, but if you're relying on that, you may as well just use the plasma rifle. Screw it, I'm going to rocket them. I miss the cool BFG. That one can instantly dish out over 2500 damage if you shoot a wall. With the beta BFG you're busy vomiting Christmas ornaments for 40 ticks for half the cool BFG's damage. Your screen is obscured too, rendering you pretty vulnerable. Oh yeah, remember what I said about stunlocking cyber demons? Yeah, it's still as risky as two-shotting one with the cool BFG. Another thing I notice is that I keep running out of cells while many enemies are still alive, and there's still the final fight left with a billion barons and cyber demons. Guess I'll just rely on infighting? Well, that was awful. I ended up rocketing and super shotgunning stragglers because this thing eats up cells like candy without really showing anything in return. Maybe we should check out a map that really relies on the BFG. Scythe map 26. This is a classic slaughter map with... Whoa, 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 that media has got to go. Symphony X will go after my $10 ad revenue otherwise. This map has many cell pickups so spamming the BFG is the way to go. But I've always seen this map as a giant infighting map. Most enemies here will end up getting killed by the cyber demons. Anyway, getting past these enemies after the wall lowers is a bit of a pain. Getting rid of these cyber demons is surprisingly viable. There are wide targets and the spread from this distance isn't too bad. Jumping down and potentially getting stuck by the Hell Knights or Revenants is bad though. With the cool BFG, you can utilize the traces to tunnel your way out, but with the beta's plasma stream, it just isn't working out. Nah, again, I found the rocket launcher to be more useful in this map. Let's try one more map for the heck of it. God Machine. You get the BFG before the Cathedral fight, and initially it seems to work out fine to tunnel through the imps and maybe even kill the Cyber Demons, but then the Hellnets and Barons catch up. Oh boy, you have a hard time pushing them back with this thing. It's definitely possible, but the cleanup will be an absolute pain in the bum bum. As for the final area, it seems to work fine until you run out of ammo to kill all the Revenants and Mancubi. 
Side units can be used to infight stuff here. Fighting these pain elementals is absolute hell, as your beta DFG shots are struggling a lot hitting anything. Dealing with an ultra surprise is also tricky. Rockets, help me out. Oh yes, the infamous pain elemental wave. Hey, you know what would make this even more fun? Using the beta loss souls. Instead of charging at you, the beta loss souls will deal a psychic attack dealing between 1 and 8 damage in multiples of 1. This is not a hitscan attack, so targets between you and the lost soul are ignored. It's similar to the Archfall Devil Magics in a way, but without the explosion and the vertical thrust. Their psychic attack is in fact so ridiculous it can even hit you through walls. Yeah, there's no line of sight check for the attack itself. Now, combine that with Boom's unlimited lost souls, and this will be one hell of a show. Absolutely unplayable. And with the crappy BFG, you cannot even kill them fast enough before they fry your brain. Let's all thank its software for changing the beta BFG and Lost Souls one month before the game's release. I mean, Lost Souls still suck, but they've been worse. The BFG changed from being glorified plasma rifle to a hybrid energy-based super mega shotgun. One of the most fun and interesting weapons ever made for an FPS game. Probably by accident too. And lastly, big thanks to Lee Killo for reverse engineering the beta BFG's behavior all the way back in 1998. It's not a 100% perfect emulation, but it's very close. This code can be found in the MBF codebase and enabled through the hyphen beta command line parameter. If you're curious how I managed to get it to work in Pyroboom Plus, well, the MBF code is in there too. All you need to do is add this line of code, remove the MBF compatibility check if you wish, and there you go. The plasma projectiles do not use the beta graphics however. These are from the Pyroboom Plus WAD. I made a PWAD that replaces them with the beta graphics instead, and there you go. Same with the Lost Soul, simply replace these lines of code, load up your beta graphics replacement PWAT, and done. Enjoy killing these pests. And that's all. The beta DFG sucks, and that's my conclusion. Thank you all for watching, an extra thank you goes to the patrons and YouTube members, and a massive shout out to the biggest nerds, 19 Day, Andrew Dunai, Andrew Riss, Andrew Yukimchuk, Andri Dicklin, Art Cox, Basil, Xpeg Nikum, Bitcore, Bouncy Bob, Ryan Thompson, Bunderstorm, Kappa Bitch, Chief Kotrake, Choose Your Fights, Cyprian Rusen, Doc Cloeca, Doom64 Hunter, Francis T218, Furtek, Jace Dalhover, John Guy, Joseph Shantz, Katsuna Teku, Kirio Gorovets, Lars Soderberg, Matthew Merkin, Matthias Zippert, Max Payne 67, Mr. Cheran, Neko Ninja Core, Nighthawk 71, Pete Peterse, Pix Drift, Pyro Shi, Quake Gamer 632, Raven King, Ryan Quinn, Riley, Robert Wakeley, Salt Bad Guy, Sensodyne 93, Space Duck, Specteer, Squidward's Giant Hot and Juicy Throbbing Nose, Steak Jacobs, Stephen Bone, Stephen Halustic, Teko Kami, Thomas, Tim Grasimov, Tim Goldberg, Timothy Collar, Turbine 2K5, Victorik, Who's Ace, and Zepp Rouse Dower. You're the best. See you next time.